Chapter 1 Eight hours later Iron Horse was a small barter town built over the remains of a forgotten suburb in the shadows of a devastated city. Depending on the time of year, the population fluctuated between 12,000 to 18,000 with locals making their living by servicing the needs of travelers just passing on through. Situated midway between the industrial territory's gateway and border town, Iron Horse was a hub for smuggling and anything could be purchased on its streets. This made Iron Horse a mecca for all known vices and the town's center was a labyrinth of bars, gambling dens, and brothels. There was a military presence in Iron Horse, but soldiers on duty here treated their assignments like paid vacations. This included their commanding officer, Colonel Benjamin Drake. When he was first assigned to Iron Horse a decade earlier, Colonel Drake wasted no time and negotiated mutually beneficial deals with every smuggler within his area of responsibility, a weekly tax for permission to operate. The colonel soon became the richest officer in the army. Despite countless reports of gross corruption, the colonel was never court-martialed. This was due to the generous percentage of his weekly earnings he happily kicked up to headquarters north of the gateway. Colonel Drake wasn't just the richest officer in the army, he was also one of the most trusted with top brass often sharing the highest level intelligence with him. On this particular evening, Colonel Drake sat behind his desk and lit a cigar while pondering the latest gossip he'd received from a four-star general he'd helped turn into a very rich man. Danny fucking blue, Colonel Drake thought to himself. Of all the scumbags to escape custody, it had to be Danny blue. Colonel Drake was distracted by the sound of a distant horn outside. He crushed out his barely puffed on cigar, grabbed his binoculars and stood to look out his window. Beyond Fort Iron Horse's parking lot was Main Street and across this was the sheriff's office. The colonel could see two vehicles pull up in front of the sheriff's office as several evening pedestrians gathered around. A few seconds later, the sheriff and several deputies came out of the building. The small crowd tried to move in closer, but the deputies quickly formed a perimeter. The sheriff stood along the passenger side of the lead vehicle, a king cab pickup truck, and spoke with the occupants. Carl Grant stepped out of the truck's passenger side, waved at the crowd, and shouted, We got him. This got a hearty cheer from the dozens of townsfolk who'd gathered around. The young bounty hunter and the sheriff walked side by side to the back of the second vehicle, a prisoner van. Kyle opened the rear door of the van and reached in. A second later, he pulled out a small yet well-dressed man in handcuffs. The small man did his best to keep a cold expression and hide his fear, but the illusion was shattered when he pissed himself at the sight of Iron Horse's sheriff. Before anything could be said, one of the deputies grabbed the urine-soaked Lil Manlet and dragged him inside. The sheriff gave Kyle a thick envelope and shook his hand. Folks are plenty glad you brought that slimy card cheat back here, Kyle. The varmints got lots to answer for. Thanks, Sheriff. Pleasure doing business with you. Kyle said with a smile before walking back to the truck. Kyle waved again at the townsfolk who kept cheering the capture of the hated con artist. Kyle climbed back in the passenger side of the truck and Laura tooted the horn before slowly motoring back onto the street. The van followed a second later. Colonel Drake grinned as he watched the two vehicles slowly cruising away along Iron Horse's main strip. Kyle Grant, the colonel mumbled to himself. Of course.